Hi, I'm Adam with AdvancedDimensions.com. Today I'm going to show you the Leica 3D Disto version 6 software. This was released a few weeks ago in about the middle of March 2020. And I'm going to show you the new features that have been added from the version 5 software that's been out for the last few years. I'm going to get right into it. So, as you can see, the interface looks very similar to the version 5. Up here at the top here, you can see now it says version 6.0.0.1. And then in the middle is one of the key features that's ha that have been added. Um, and it's for layering. So we can now add layers to our scans. So if we wanted to layer for the walls or for the ceiling or the floor, we add the layers here and then we can turn them on and we can turn them off within the program. We can also see these layers when we export it to our CAD uh, export, whether using AutoCAD or another CAD program. Extremely powerful feature. I've been, at, I've been wanting this one for a while and they listened and they got it out there. So I'm very happy about this. I just wanted to show you guys how it works and some of the other features that were added in the drawing side of things. So first I'm gonna start by doing some scanning to show you how the layering works. And then after the layering is complete, I'll show you the new drawing features that were added. So I'm gonna jump into the layers. I'm gonna scan a floor plan in my office and showcase the ceiling, showcase the floor. And in order to do that, I'm gonna name some layers to reflect that. So first layer I'm gonna name is wall. After I'm done, I'm just gonna hit enter, change it to blue, let's add a new layer ceiling enter we'll change this to maybe orange and lastly I'm going to do a new layer of floor and we'll change this to green so first I'm going to start with my wall wall and I'm going to take my two points of reference that you always take when you first start using the uh, when you first start a scan. Sorry, my desk is, or sorry, my office has got a few papers in it. All right, so I'm going to take the first point on a wall. I have a little alcove wall over there. So I'm going to take the first point on that wall and notice my grid has been established. Top down view, we can see that lines up with the grid. And now I'm going to take the second point on that wall a few feet over at a roughly about the same level. It doesn't have to be. This file, when it exports, is it's exporting level. So um, it has nothing to do with the first two points that you take. I have a lot of customers that ask me that. It, it's really, it's level from the get-go, so you don't have to worry about that. So here's my wall, or here's my, um, my first starting position. You can see from the top down, when you take off perspective view, that lines up with our grid. This is really, these points one and points two should always be like a throwaway their throwaway. Uh, they're really nothing that you're going to utilize in the scan. It's to set up that X and that Y. Now I'm going to start scanning what I want. I'm going to start scanning the ceiling, the perimeter of the room first, and then I'm going to do some points along the ceiling. So I'm going to keep in my wall layer. I'm going to go back to my view screen, and I'm going to lock it this time so I stay and I don't jump back and forth. And now I'm going to just move my um, view up to the wall. I'm going to scan right at the top just so you can see you know what's happening. Sometimes it's hard because my walls are the same color. It's so going to take when I do scanning of a perimeter of a room I actually hold out about the, the I hold out the three inches um, and I do want to see my previous point so you can see now. I hold out that three inches to account for any mud joints that are happening there. Um, if I was scanning for a countertop, I would set it to an auto scan and then I would see exactly what's happening in the corner so I could cut my countertop to it. But in this situation, I just want to get my perimeter of the room. And if I went right to the corner, that's actually going to give me a skewed measurement because the mud is, is going to interfere with that. Now, the other, the other misconception with getting corners that I found is you know if I if I try to get right smack dab in the center of that corner where those two walls meet this unit is accurate to 
a millimeter or less depending on your range. So if I hit a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left of that corner, that's actually going to skew my entire room versus hitting these two that are definitely on one of those adjacent walls. And then I would just join those two points in CAD later. And I'll show you how I would do it in this software as well after I get this room perimeter scan. So I just have a few more corners to, ha to get here. And then I will have my perimeter scanned. And then I'm going to change the layer to my ceiling and hit some points on the ceiling. And once I've done that, we'll, we'll take a look at the way the data looks after I've hit a couple points on the floor. So in this case, I'm a little closer to this wall than the other wall. So it's kind of weird the way the, uh, the camera looks. But in, in reality, what I'd be doing if I was scanning this as a job um, I would be holding my tablet over where my points are, not really looking at the screen, but more looking at where my laser is. Um, so now I have the perimeter scan. I'm going to hop out of here and we'll see what it looks like. So you can see that's perimeter all the way around. I am going to orbit this. And what I was saying before about points one and points two being trashed, I'm just going to trash this guy. And I'm going to select that last point, 14, that I took, and I'm going to connect those. So there's my perimeter. I'm going to leave that line in between point one and two just for a reference. But there's my perimeter. Now, what I was saying before we can do with the software is if we wanted to square these corners out, which is what I typically do when I'm in the field, um, for my, you know, if I'm passing this off to somebody else, I want that file to look clean. If I'm passing it off to myself, I still want that file to look clean. So what I would do from here is I would jump into my drawing features and I would just say, hey, I would like to connect these two guys. And then I'll take that line that's in between and I'll trash that. So now I have a nice square corner and see how I held that, that point there and that point there. It doesn't really matter because I have the square corner. This is going to give me extremely accurate view of the angles of this wall of exactly um, of exactly what's happening. So, but instead of me going around the room and doing that, uh, I'm gonna continue by changing to my ceiling. Notice at the top here, I've got it to ceiling and I'm gonna jump back in and I'm gonna take some points around the ceiling. So always when I take my first point, I unlock this so I can jump back in and I'm going to erase that line that connects those. Because the Disto software, it continues to draw a line from point to point. When I change planes from the walls to the ceilings to the floors, I always delete that first line so it doesn't look so messy. Now I'm going to lock it and I'm going to move this around the perimeter just like I was doing. And we don't have to be too particular about exactly where this goes. We just need it to hit on the ceiling. I am holding it away from that corner because there is actually mud in that corner of the ceiling as well. So this is going to give me a better, better look at exactly what's happening with that ceiling. In the CAD, we will be able to look at this because the file is level is leveled when it gets exported. In the CAD, we'll be able to look at this and essentially we'd be able to see these points measure, measure the Z value and we'd be able to see if the ceiling was out of plumb, or sorry, out of level. We'd be able to see if the walls are out of plumb if I took two points. I, right now, I just had that perimeter scan. If I would have taken a perimeter scan maybe at the bottom of the room and at the top of the room, then I'd be able to see those two points and I'd be able to see if they were out of plumb. But uh, lastly, I think that's actually the last one I need. Yep, you can see there's my joint. I'm just gonna hit this checkbox and there's my ceiling. So I have my ceiling, I have my, my walls. Now, the last thing I wanna do is I'm gonna change this to floor and I'm going to just hit just a few points on the floor. I don't need to go crazy. Okay, so I'm going to hit a point here. I'm just going to hit three points on the floor. I'm going to take my first point, leaving that viewfinder turned off. 
delete that line. Notice it's green now. I'm going to take my second point someplace else on the floor. And I'm going to take my third point, maybe over closer to me. Okay. So now I have my three points on the floor and I can just join this so that I have a closed loop. So we can see my ceiling, my floor, and uh, my walls. What's cool is you can change these. You can turn, so I just turned off my walls. I just turned off my ceiling so all I see is the floor. Or you can turn it on to the wall layer and do vice versa with the, um, with the floor and the ceiling. Extremely cool. But now I want to take this, I want to save it and see what it looks like in CAD. Um, or actually before I do that, I want to show you the last feature that's new. So we'll go back to the top view here. So the last feature that's new is in the drawing, uh, is drawing area. And we were able to draw circles and rectangles and connect lines like I did up here before. Um, and all these three as well, but we were not able to draw an arc. So this is a new feature. So we can draw an arc using three points. We can draw an arc using two points and adding a, a radius in. So I'm going to say, let's draw an arc using three points. Point number 22 is highlighted, so it's saying, hey, pick the second point. And then pick the third point. And notice my arch is drawn in. And if that looks good, I hit the checkbox. The other cool thing that this is, so like when you're doing an, a scan of a window, uh, or a window arch or something like that, you're always taking these points, you know, every inch or so, but you'd never be able to get and figure out exactly what the arch radius was until you got back to the office and you drew that arch in, in AutoCAD. So now we can draw an arch using these three points. I can even see information about this arch, like here's my radius, uh, here's the arch length, extremely cool. Um, and then the last thing that we can do is we can select two, and we can jump in and we can go, hey, I want to I want to make a arch based on two points. So it's going to say, you know, do you want it up? Do you want it horizontal or vertical? I'm going to keep it on the floor, and it says pick that second point. And then it's saying, hey, put an arch, so or put a radius in. So I'll put the radius of 130. We'll click OK. Now it says pick the side that you want. So you click OK, and it'll show you two. And you just pick the one that you want, and it goes with that one. So that's, what you, that's what's new with the version 6 of the Leica 3D Disto software. This comes standard with your Disto. So if you purchase a, dis if you purchase a 3D Disto, uh, from us and you're wondering about the software it's included in the purchase price and the purchase price right now it's actually been updated for 2020 it is eight thousand fifty dollars it used to be eight thousand two hundred ninety five and they've uh, recently changed and updated the prices for 2020 to be eight thousand fifty dollars including the software. If you are using a, a version, like if you're using a previous version of the Disto and you wanna upgrade and you're in version four of the software or five of the software um, and you wanna upgrade to version six, it's a, there is a cost to it, um, but the cost is pretty minimal when you think about the power of these two features. It's $131. And if you are interested in anything like that, reach out to me directly at advanceddimensions.com uh, or you can send me an email at adam at advanceddimensions.com and ask for a quote. And I just need a serial number and a uh, equipment number and I can send you the quote or I can send you a quote for the 131 bucks and uh, those two numbers are going to be what I submit to Leica for them to uh, issue the version six license key. All right, enough of that. Um, I wanna show you now the CAD side of things. So if I wanna save this now, let's just save as, and we're gonna call this live version six export. This does have a limit. Yeah, so we'll click okay. So that was just saving the file, and now I'm going to click the checkbox, and, or that was saving the folder, and now I'm going to hit the checkbox and save the file. So this was live 
version six uh, export. Okay. And then the last thing I'm going to jump in and I'm going to export that file that I just did. And we're going to let's take a look and see what that looks like in CAD. So I'm just going to open up my CAD and on my desktop there is a shortcut to these exports which is here and we go into export the one that I just did was called live we have our standard file versions that have been exported I'm gonna just pull in my DWG and right off the bat when we zoom out you will notice we have colors we have layers this was always before it was always blue with these red dots now I have colors and layers so I can orbit this around I didn't take any photos but the photos would come in on their own layers orbit it around we can turn these layers on and off without having to create them ourselves this just saved a whole lot of time all right, that's all I got. Please let me know if you have any questions. Shoot me an email, adam at advanceddimensions.com. If you want to know any more information, I'd be happy to help. And this was just showcasing, like I said, the upgrade from or the update of the version 6 Leica 3D Disto software. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Uh, if, you like, if you like what you see, you can always subscribe. I'm going to do my best to keep pumping out some videos for you guys. Thanks again.